welcome to Sunday Sit Down. Uh, today is Sunday, August the 19th, 2018. I'm Stephanie. Uh, we're here at Indigo Soul Yoga, and Letitia Lee is with me. Hello. And she is our guest on our show today, <laughs> our topic. Okay, so wait a couple minutes and see if anyone joins in, and then we'll move on from there. Thank you for coming. I'm glad to be here. It's like a couple of minutes after five o'clock, so okay. We shall see what we have here. You know, I was thinking about how I was gonna sit. I'm like, well, Stephanie crossed her legs, so I was like, I know I'm not gonna <laughs> to do that. <laughs> hello, hello. We have some hearts. Let's see. Thank you. I'm not sure. Let's see. Anybody joining in? Okay, Brenda. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. Brenda is with us. Hi, Brenda. <clears throat>
take occasionally, very, very occasionally, because it's a little far, but um, I do do videos. I happen to like um, an online person. Her name is Faith, and she's spiritually fly on Instagram. I know, I, yes. Spiritually I fly, love, follow her on social media. Yes, I love her, her flow. I like the music that she uses, so yeah, I'll do her class. Oh, yeah, she says down dog is working. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It, it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, gosh, I lost my train of thought. I have like 10,000 things. So well, I will say, in fact, I'll say something about um, the yoga. I have, um, sometimes I have knee issues. And so I had tried to figure out what was going on. I had went to visit someone. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, a, a therapist. And he said, you know, your body's a little off balance. Mm -hmm. And immediately when he said that, I'm like, oh. Okay, and he gave me this prescription, not not drugs, but a, prescri a workout prescription uh -huh. to try to balance out, but he, yoga was not on his list, and I thought, I'm going to go home, I'm going to work on my, my, my poses, I'm going to work on my balancing and all of that, and so I haven't been back to him, but I know, I noticed a difference, especially um, he had me raise my leg, and to me, I was just basically doing tree pose and close my eyes. Mm -hmm. One, one was definitely a little bit more wobbly than the other one, but mm -hmm. it's gotten better. So I will say that about how, you know, I, I know that yoga does really help with balancing and, and especially if you have like um, knee problems. You know, he didn't see it as a uh, something that was internal. He saw it as me not being balanced. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Also, um, we, we talked a little bit earlier, you have three children, right? Mm -hmm. Teenagers. Yes. One college student, yes. is that right? Second yes. year, third year? He's going into his third third year, yeah. Oh, exciting. <laughs> so do you, um, do your children ever incorporate yoga into their lifestyle? Do they ever practice with you sometimes? We have PE, and sometimes I would try to get them. It's very rare. <laughs> very rare. It's like my boys are like, they want to, you know, they want to use weights and things like mm -hmm. that. So, What about your daughter? Um, yes, she does sometimes. She does. Okay. She does. All right. So <laughs> we were we had mentioned earlier that Letitia is uh, her, she's homeschooled her children. So her oldest is in college. Her other two are at home. Thirteen and thirteen, fifteen, and then the oldest is eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So with homeschooling, PE is important. Mm -hmm. Physical education, yes. mind, body, spirit, just as in regular school. Mm -hmm. Just gonna put that out there, guys. Yes. Okay, so does anyone have any questions right now before we transition to talking about our main subject of uh, healthy living, plant-based, vegan versus vegetarian? Let's see. And if not, we'll move forward. Let's see, hold this up as a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, Letitia, you follow, my understanding, a plant-based lifestyle? Yes. So and tell I, us a little bit about that or the differences and we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. Um, I consider myself to be plant-based, although I feel like my heart is moving more to being a vegan. And I'll explain why. Plant-based is basically that everything that I eat, um, butter, um, all of my dairy, it, all of it is plant-based. I don't eat any meat byproducts at all. Um, I do have a um, sensitive, not a sensitivity, but I do care about um, leather and, and some animal made products. I do still have some things in my house that I, you know, I have some coach bags and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I don't think I would go out and go buy a leather coat at this point in my life when I know, now that I, I'm aware of um, how animals are, you know, treated in that way. but. Um, a vegan would definitely um, not go out and buy leather. They don't, <coughs> again, they have a plant-based lifestyle just like myself. They eat, you know, all plants, fruits, vegetables. Um, but they also care about, you know, the materials that they wear. They care about, um, you know, the environment. They're, they're more concerned about the, the, the treatment of animals and plants and, and things like that. And when I say plants, I mean like slaughterhouses like that so um, where whereas I'm not 100% I'm not gonna go and knock on Tyson's door and say hey you need to close this down I do 
have a concern about the way the animals are, um, you know, they're not just treated, but just, I think that's how I even started on this whole process. I read an article when I was like 18 about how food is processed, and it really concerned me at 18 that I think that was the last time that I had a hamburger when I was 18. And my <coughs> journey just continues to progress after that. So um, there, I do have a concern. Even when I stopped eating burgers, I still ate chicken, but I was still like, this, there's, there's, there's too much chemicals, there's, there's the, the way that things are processed, it really bothered me. So mm -hmm. that's basically my journey. So that's plant-based, it's just plants, you know, um, all of it, dairy, like I said, um, butter, my butter is plant-based, all of those things. Vegan is more plant-based and you uh, have some concern about animal treatment. And then, um, so vegetarian, tell us about that. So I was off the vegetarian after I stopped eating um, burgers and things. So vegetarians will eat eggs, vegetarians will incorporate some, um, you know, cheese, so vegetarians will eat pizza. Um, there is some still animal byproducts in a vegetarian's diet. So they have not completely eliminated um, meat products in their food. Some vegetarians only eat fish, some vegetarians don't eat chicken, but there is still like you may go and just enjoy a bagel with some cream cheese and then that's fine for you because you're considering yourself a vegetarian. I follow that pescatarian myself mm -hmm. <coughs> where I eat fish. Um, I have a shellfish allergy so I don't eat like shellfish mm -hmm. or shrimp, crab, lobster, anything like that. Um, so really just freshwater fish. I myself have been you know, going back and forth um, in regards to plant-based versus vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm led to follow a vegan lifestyle at present. And I just feel follow, you know, where I am yeah. in my mind, body, and what, where I feel led to go. So just being open to be informed and, you know, moving forward as far as being you know, healthy and my best mm -hmm. for me. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's the, that's the key thing. Um, at the end of the day, whatever you're eating, I think it's important, and I think you as a practitioner knows you have to be aware of your body and what your body is feeling like. Um, I can definitely tell when I eat certain things um, immediately how I feel. Um, and I think that's people, I, I used to tell my children, I said, you know, especially my son, I'm like, you, you eat uh, so much junk food. <laughs> and actually, I don't even call it food. I always, my, my daughter's like, junk is not food. But <laughs> you eat so much junk that you don't even realize when you are sick. Mm -hmm. Because you don't real, you don't understand, your body is not able to send you that message to say mm -hmm. you're bloated or you're, you're lethargic for a reason mm -hmm. or, you know, all of those different things. And I think sometimes we don't realize that because we're so used to eating a certain way. That's true. Mm -hmm. I agree. Question. I'm not sure if you're able to answer it or not, um, but I know some people who are carnivores eat meat mm -hmm. and, you know, the grass-fed beef and things as mm -hmm. such, mm -hmm. they still follow a, like, plant-based lifestyle. Do you know anything about that? Can you speak to that at all? Um, I think, um, again, it's probably going back to what I started off saying is that there are people who are concerned about the way that meat is processed. Mm -hmm. And so they are, they would consider that clean eating or something, mm -hmm. clean meat eating or, or something like that. So um, in that sense, I mean, they would still be considered carnivores, but they do have a conscious awareness of that, that the meat is being processed in a way that's not healthy, you know, for you because of all the chemicals that are put into, um, you know, the chicken and the, the cows and so on and so forth, whatever that may be. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. That makes sense as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to bring the children back in again, okay. and we're going to ask, so do your, how, how, I know you said your, um, your, one of your sons likes kind of some junk food, which yes. I think that's a teenager yes. kind of thing, you know. Okay, so um, my Otis, he, I would consider him a vegetarian. Um, he, he loves pizza. Um, he stopped eating chicken when he was probably maybe four and we just could never get him to eat it again. I don't know <laughs> why, but he would eat like um, chicken hot dogs and things like that. And it's like, you're eating turkey bacon, but you won't eat a chicken leg, you know? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but I would consider him vegetarian. I haven't seen him, I haven't seen him eat, um, you know, anything outside of, uh, 
you know, out of that, now that he's in school, um, he has told me that he has tried um, chicken again, but I don't know how often he eats it. Now, since he's been home over the summer, I haven't seen him eat any chicken. Um, my youngest uh, son, he is not vegan. I don't even, he's not even vegetarian. He, but we, I don't buy beef and pork, so they've never had a burger. They've never had pork chops or steak or anything like that. <laughs> it's so funny because recently they had a conversation. They were all talking, you know, I think I want to try a steak one day, but I don't want just any kind of steak. I want to go somewhere and get a, you know, a, a nice stuff. Nice <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, if you're going to really try it, I'm like, just don't go to cookout or something like that. Just go, I don't know, just, you know, go to Whole Foods and find find one. <laughs> My daughter, she understands. I mean, we all, as a homeschooling thing, part of our PE was also, we did like two years of nutrition. Okay. And so we studied and we looked at all the different types of eating and, and we did some type of, um, you know, I had them fast to figure out, you know, to, to know what it feels like to not, to be, you know, well. And so they would know the difference, like when they ate something. So my daughter knows immediately, like, oh, I know I shouldn't have, you know, eaten that or I know how that's going to make me feel. and all those different things. So she kind of goes back and forth. She she definitely understands, um, you know, what veganism is. She understands vegetarianism, but she, I don't know. She, she I, I would say she's vegetarian. That's the best that I can say. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would say she's vegetarian. I think we have a question or a comment, so I'm okay. just gonna scoot up here and take a peek. Oh, Wynette's comment, she said, Wynette says that she hasn't had beef or pork since March of this year. Mm. Um, she's tried to eat turkey, but couldn't uh, stand the taste or smell. Mm. I was gonna add, that was gonna, I was gonna ask you on that, have you noticed how different it tastes since, I mean, it, I know it's been a while since you had it, but um, I, would, I would bet that anyone who has not had meat in a very long time, you can tell the, the, the smell, the taste, all of that, it's like becomes, almost foreign to your body it's like your body almost rejects it in a way for some people i have to say um my spouse he is hardcore meat eater and he's on a barbecue tournament team they do traveling oh wow like, he is <laughs> all about it so um, he's meat and potatoes maybe some little sweet peas <laughs> a little <laughs> some little sore, a little early peas some right. broccoli um I try to get him to eat a veggie burger and mm. like, fake meat and you know, it's, but it's interesting. I, um, he cooks a lot more than I do mm -hmm. and um, like, you know, I don't like the way the meat smells, but that's just for me. Yeah. And I, I will cook it for him and I don't ever eat it. It's not, it's not my jam. I, there's got to, you know, they, they said the impossible burger. I've never had the impossible burger. I've had the Beyond Burger. It's delicious, right? Yes. yes. And I didn't think, it took me a while to even buy it because I did not want to have to, um, I didn't want it to taste too much like, you know, a, an actual hamburger, but it was, it was fine. I, I, yeah. Some people don't like to have the mock meat taste and I just didn't. I was like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that, but it was good. I was okay with it. Okay. So we have another comment here. Um, Chicken, fish, and seafood only for now, and chicken I'll be breaking up, breaking up with soon. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes, it smells. <laughs> yeah, it, isn't that weird? Isn't that interesting? <coughs> because, I mean, it's a lot of us, and, I, and I'm sure a lot of vegans and plant-based people, you grow up eating, you know, those types of foods, and then when you start to, you know, kind of move away from them, it's, it's, a, it's interesting how your body's, like, even the smell, you're like, <laughs> you know, that doesn't smell right or <laughs> it is interesting how our bodies and our noses can. Have you, um, I just thought about this, the, uh, is it fork over knives? I have not seen it. Have you seen it? I have seen it. Um, <laughs> some of the documentaries I've seen, I've seen um, fork over knives, I've seen uh, Super Size Me. Um, that's the one with the McDonald's. That's that the one with the McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, oh gosh, what was the one with the sugar? Um, that was I've seen uh, the, the most recent one that a lot of people were talking about on Netflix. Um, I, don't, is it, I don't 
are you talking about? Yeah. And a lot of people are like, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Done. That was like a that was like a wake up call for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They just were, they were just done with it after that. Um, yeah, so I've still seen that one. There's been a couple because when, like I said, when we did some research and on a nutrition part of our homeschooling, we watched a lot of documentaries. Mm-hmm. The only one I haven't watched was Earthlings, and I know a lot of people say that Earthlings was the one that um, that that clicked for them. It's that one's a pretty morbid documentary, but it's 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 a, like a behind the scenes documentary about what's actually going on in slaughterhouses. Mm-hmm. Oh goodness, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I don't think I'd be ready. For, I'm not ready for it. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty dark. I have to say, I haven't watched it, but it, I mean, I don't. I don't think I need to watch it. I already, you know, I think You're I'm aware. aware. I'm aware. the other day and I just watched it and I thought this does not look appealing to me but somebody else you know to see it you know slow simmered and he's talking mm-hmm. all low and the the juices are coming from the red and it, you know yeah but that's, <laughs> but that's the thing where you know there's different uh, lifestyles for mm-hmm. other people for every person exactly so what do you think is a different diet versus lifestyle what are your thoughts there can I just say that I hate the word diet I, Go ahead, yeah, I, just, I don't like that word. I've never liked that word because to me, it's always a temporary fix to a, a long-term issue. issue. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that for me, your lifestyle needs to match whatever it is that you want to accomplish. So if you see yourself living a long, healthy life, then don't adopt a diet. Then incorporate things in your life that are going to assist you in achieving a long healthy life for instance um you know one of the things that that i look back on when i was thinking about coming here was just the little things that i remember doing to assist me in adopting a more healthy lifestyle where we would stop and get gas at the gas station instead of me going in and grabbing some Mm m&ms i found myself going to the granddaughter she might smile at me she's in the behind but I would, you know, everybody else would go in the store, give me some chips, give me this. And I'm like, can you just give me a banana? You know, that would be my, that was my thinking because, you know, we're all used to that convenience food. Mm-hmm. And then to me, I went from like M&M's to my new thing was buying those Lance crackers. And I'm like, this is a little bit more healthy. But, you know, really it wasn't because there's so much saturated fat and even in those. But just little things like that. If you just make little changes, um, there will be, I think, long term mm-hmm. great rewards. And it doesn't have to be anything huge and major, but that for me was something big because those little bitty, you know, snacks do add up over time. And there, you know, there's still some some things going on in your body, your, you know, your cells, your your cholesterol. All those things are changing. But to go in there and grab a banana when I know that I need some <coughs> energy, or to go and uh, get something like a grapefruit. That's been my new thing. Every time we go to the store, I just grab a grapefruit. But, um, you know, just to get that pick-me-up instead of getting a snicker bar because you're, hung, hung, what is it, uh, hangry, hangry, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, because they sell that to us and say that's what you need. But really, that's just going to push you up and then knock you down later on where you can get something that's alive and it's going to give you, um, you know, some energy that you need. So okay. just like a little mind thing that oh, definitely. that's definitely, definitely I've adopted. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to circle back, um, just kind of bring it full circle for a moment um, in regards to like yoga and healthy living, uh, diet, lifestyle, plant-based, vegan, vegetarian. So um, some yoga practitioners are vegan. Some yoga (laughs) practitioners are vegetarian. Some are carnivore. Some are um, carnivore slash plant-based healthy living. The, The key takeaway from a yogic standpoint is truly trying to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to follow a 
vegan lifestyle, that is wonderful, especially when it comes to the yamas and the niyamas, you know, non-violence, you know, violence, oh, killing the animals, those kind of go hand in hand. You know, even though we're trying to, you know, consume the animal for nutritious purposes, but some people, I, I'm not there yet. I still eat fish. And, I, and, you know, maybe I'll let it go one day. Maybe not. And that's okay. But really just trying to be your best self mm -hmm. and be healthy. Mind, body, spirit. That's what it truly uh, boils down to. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Anything else you want to share, add to? I don't think there's any questions up here. I don't think so. No, I was just, you know, just piggybacking on what you were saying it really is just you know remembering that it our lives are not a day of course we make decisions day by day but we're thinking long term so um, just a little change every single day and just being conscious conscious and aware of of what you're eating and what you know what it's doing to the environment as a whole and what it's doing to your body and just all of those things and whatever eating choice you make just you know as long as you're aware of um, of those things and then, then I think we're you know good yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay all right so we're gonna just kind of wrap it up here um, I think if you guys watched our last little sit down with uh, Nikki Colwell uh, she and I both the chain relevant, relevant church here in uh, Locust Grove Georgia um, Nikki and uh, Letitia are going to join me for another Sunday sit down. Hopefully, <coughs> maybe September, October. We're trying to get the dates uh, settled in. And we're going to just kind of talk about yoga um, for those that follow a uh, Christian or faith based uh, practice. So we'll, we'll check in on that. So I'll be looking out for um, a post on that Sunday sit down. Also, coming up announcements here in the studio on Friday. August the 24th, we have our donation-based exploring meditation. Gail LaFrance Nor Norris, she'll be here at 6.30 on Friday um, sharing um, different types of meditation practices. So please come out for that. You can register via um, the uh, Indigo Soul webpage or you can use the Mind Body um, app as well to sign up. I think we are over 60%, 70% full, so de definitely go ahead and get signed up for that. Also, um, coming up, let's see, September Labor Day, the first Monday in um, Labor Day, we have a vinyasa, so one class that day at 10 a.m., Beth will be leading that, it's vinyasa and sound bath, it'll be about an hour and a half, so definitely get registered for that. And on Friday, September the 7th, that's our paint night, it's a nice time to come out to uh, just fellowship with other yoga practitioners or just um, people that kind of want to just come, come together and hang out, have some time together, bring your friends, and if other. Allison Love from Macon, Georgia, she is a teacher, artist, and musician. She'll be uh, guiding us through um, uh, painting a sunset with a lotus flower. So definitely come out for that. The, the investment for that is $30. So um, we are open here at the studio six days a week. Um, we're closed on Fridays except for um, pop-up workshops and things as such. So be on the lookout. If you guys have questions, feel free to send an email, call, text, uh, etc. Um, thank you guys for joining in. Well, Tish, you want to have a few words? No, this was great. Thank you for thank having me. Oh, you're very <laughs> welcome. Thank you guys. If For those that join in later, feel free to ask questions or comment. And um, I'm sure Letitia will be happy to answer. And if I have any um, answers, I'll be happy to do so as well. <laughs> have a wonderful day. If we will bring our hands at Heart Center, allow grace to guide you and grace to keep you all. Namaste. Namaste.